spirituality fun again? When did spirituality become stuffy, boring, and serious? When did spirituality become this thing that was so important that we had to carefully talk about it in hushed tones or say the word miracle with quotes? I witnessed that today. I was feeling really, really jazzed about the channeling I received earlier, the channeling I received yesterday. I went to go get some tech help at a retail store that has all these great tech people to just like figure out some stuff way faster than Googling it. And I met an amazing employee and we'll call him Bill. Bill's a really, really nice guy. And we started chatting and we just hit it off. And yeah, beautiful proof, magic is real. I go into the store, the first person I actually have a real conversation with is super into this stuff. But as he says miracle, he says it like this. Why does miracle have to be taboo? So taboo that those of us who speak of it add little quote marks like it's not okay or make it quasi. That's contributing to the problem. What's wrong with wearing bunny ears in a video? Nothing. So I'm going to put them back on. And in other videos, I'm going to put on whatever I want. The one great spiritual teacher comedian that I would love to recommend to you who lives and breathes this is J.P. Sears. He has a kind of tone like how I became gluten intolerant. And it's, it's kind of like a typical spiritual teacher vibe, like I'm being very serious because this is very important. But he, he's just kind of hilarious sometimes. And sometimes you really, really have to think about it. And he does a great job of breaking you out of your shell. I got news for you. Our shells are made to be broken. If you have had an awakening experience, whether small or large, I, I've had quite a variety and they're all intense and good, sometimes gentle, but usually intense, then you know we are in a world of infinite possibility. You know we're in a world of unity consciousness simultaneously living this 3D time-space mush that we call Earth in 2017, or whenever year it is that you're watching this. So what does it mean to have fun with spirituality? It means to realize you have access to all things. You have access to all beings. You have access to all personalities. If you want to be really nice, and really chill, and really pleasant, that's okay. I hope that's fun for you. If you're kind of angry, and you want to go on a rant, because there isn't a justice in the world, and spirituality for you means getting justice, great. If you're silly, if you're colorful, if you're energetic, if you're a little bit like me, and you just like filming videos in a spaceship studio, great. Um, if, you know that isn't right and everything has to be perfect and this is far from perfect, you're kind of causing suffering for yourself. What does it mean if spirituality isn't fun? It means you're not free to dance. It means you're not enjoying it. If you are mind, body, emotions, and spirit, and you're not having fun with one of those, you're not really enjoying your life to the capacity that you could. And if you think about the continuum to enlightenment, and enlightenment, David Hawkins' calibration is between 700 and 1,000, and joy calibrates at 530, where do you think fear is? Fear is like around 100. When they talk about fear, a fair amount. And I feel like most people are serious because they are afraid of how they will be received with their real selves. And okay, my real self is one that is so excited for my content. Yeah, this is more David speaking than some beautiful channeled thing because I'm here like you as a fellow student and now I probably just messed up with the sound there. That's okay. You know, I'm human. I'm all right with that. Brenda Bouchard says just riff your videos in one take and while I'm sure I'll make a lot of super polished ones later, I'm here right now, friends, to share that in over 25 years of my journey as a seeker, as a wizard, as a witch, as a sorcerer, as a magus, as a student, as a devotee, as uh, so many other words. The word I like most is spiritual thrill seeker. How awesome is that? There is a space for sacred. There is a space for reverence. But when you feel access to unity and you feel a part of you that is unity, you realize you can choose whatever you want to be in this world, in this life, whatever experience you want. So the make spirituality fun again is a bit of a play on words there is an infamous politician who used the phrase, make America great again. And I won't name this person's name because when we think of somebody, we give them energy and life force from us to them. So there may actually be, there are pretty intense plans 
to put and keep a spotlight on very controversial figures. You know who I'm talking about. So we all put our attention to this person and think about them and give them all this energy, and guess what? That lifts them up, and they thrive on it. So if you want to feel awesome, don't think about stuff that takes away joy. Think about stuff that you like. Think about yourself. Think about people you respect. I have my idols on my walls. I've got uh, Will Smith. I've got Oprah. I've got Amma. I've got Edward Elric. I've got Tony Robbins. Um, I've got Lucy, Scarlett Johansson, Superwoman, and just like a lot of other people all, all over this space. The important thing in the funness of spirituality is to enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy your ascension process. Enjoy your powers. Enjoy the fact that you're struggling and your powers are just like sometimes here, sometimes not. Enjoy the fact that you may not even know if you have powers and it's kind of frustrating, but wouldn't it be awesome if you had powers? Enjoy the fact that you may not care about powers and you are liberated from that. Whatever. So this whole Make America Great Again thing was so big to rile everybody up and then guess what? Nobody's saying it. Popularity dropping, fan base dropping. It was just used. And I think if we want to shift things and shift the negative energy and be sincere about things and have a slogan, we have to live that slogan. So as opposed to using a slogan for a temporary marketing campaign, I intend to have spirituality as funness, make spirituality fun again, a core component of not just a brand of videos and educational materials, but who I am, how I live. If you meet me in person and I'm not acting like spirituality is fun, maybe I'm going through a healing process, maybe I'm not feeling like being that moment of unity, but I guarantee you there is access to it. If you're like, hey, David, let's make spirituality fun, I would love to help you do that or bring that to wherever we are if people there want it. So I encourage you, enjoy this, your, this part of your path. Whether you are in pain because you're healing through something or pain for any other reason, you can make it fun. You can gamify it. You can see how many more pain points until you're done. You can see, um, you can score your level of appropriate responsiveness to pain, whether you surrender and allow or to say, screw this, I'm escaping, and you escape through your chosen method. And maybe you lose a life in your gamified version and you make dealing with pain fun. Maybe you're working on your meditation and you have a beautiful meditation style and it's peaceful even though it takes hard work and you get great benefit. But maybe if you make it fun and make it a bit more enjoyable, it would be easier. You could do it more often. Not just at that set time of day and morning or night, but you can really gamify it. You can see, okay, I'm leaving the bathroom. I'm in a space where I can kind of just be myself and have some privacy. Let's see how deep I can go in one minute and just make it fun. And See how deep of a meditation you can go. You can be serious meditation, or you can have fun and go straight up and meditate right into your third eye. See if you can astral project in a minute like Doctor Strange from the movie. That is mastery level. <laughs> Trust me, I have astral projected. I can do it at will. Uh, it's pretty intense, but to just literally pop out of your body and run around and stay in this plane, because it's a lot easier to go in other planes, um, it's tough. But see if you could do that. Gamify that. And if you can, or whatever else your goal is through meditation, through dealing with pain, through teaching, through learning, through whatever, life experience, see if you can reward yourself. See if you can get a prize. See if you can see some big life challenge as a final boss of a level. Do you have your power-ups? Do you have your upgrades? Like, there's so many ways to make spirituality fun. And it, because... Unity and everything exists simultaneously, you can bring fun into sacredness. If you look at some Buddhists, they're really fun and they smile. At the Zen Buddhist temple in Ann Arbor, where I spent 10 years of my life, this life, the Buddha had like a Santa hat and the Buddha had like sunglasses and they would put all this stuff on the Buddha just for funness and just for jovial nature of it. So I encourage you, enjoy spirituality, make it fun again. Allow this part of your being to shine. Don't lock it up in some cellar. Don't have it be there only for the chosen few people who won't ridicule you. If some people ridicule you and can't have fun with you, then either don't share it with them, in which case hopefully you really need that relationship and you're getting a lot more value out of it, or realize you can be authentic. And being authentic and finding people who celebrate you and love you for who you are is so much more energizing than the opposite. I have a friend who acts very somberly at events and dresses very somberly, even though he's super realmy like myself. He's an amazing, beautiful, great soul. I'll call him Dan. And Dan dresses normally to fit in. 
because he says even if somebody isn't spiritually wacky and can't wear tie-dye shirts or whatever they want to wear, this is a realmy type of fun cosmic shirt, um, he wants to learn whatever he can. And so for him, actually dressing like a stiff is fun because uh, Dan um, realizes that <laughs> to everybody there, his suit matters so much more. And to him, it's just like the clothing, which I, I feel this is like looks, physical appearances, doesn't really matter. Yeah, grooming is great. Yeah, taking care of yourself is great. Yeah, you chose this face and this body for a reason. But ultimately, at the highest levels, it doesn't matter. You're, you're wearing this. It'll change tomorrow. It'll change in 10 years. It'll definitely change in 30 years. And it will probably be dust in 500 years. So it's good not to take it too seriously. Like, oh, cool, this thing that I'm using, this clothes, isn't it great? I'm glad it can fit bunny ears. Um, so I hope that wasn't too long of a rant. If it was, I hope you had fun making fun of me or <laughs> looking at my surroundings. I hope you got some value for this. Um, please subscribe, comment, like. I could absolutely use your support. Um, my intention and purpose with these videos is to create a global brand called Magic is Real. The intention is to bring together any of the collective Maitreya that is awakening this year, the collective Messiah. And if those words are a bit too heavy uh, or you tend not to like them, then just any light worker, any teacher, any fellow student, it's not the age of the guru. That has passed, even though there are some figures who are very well respected and deserving of that title very much for their abilities, their compassion, their impact on the world. But this is an era where we are in this together. We are working together. And everything I've learned, I've learned from the help of so many great people in this world and in this life, so many great teachers, so many great mentors. And the more that you can help me grow, the more I can help you grow, the more we can help humanity awaken and ascend and evolve. And my intention, helping people realize magic is real, is to make magic more commonplace. Because if you're not sure if spirituality is real, if God, goddesses, Gaia, planetary awareness is real, if that Palladian download you thought you got was actually just your fanciful imagination and self-importance dressed up in some big cosmic important thing, if you don't think that was real, but you can see a miracle, you can get a shooting star on command as I have gotten, and a second bigger, brighter one as I <laughs> got once 20 seconds after the first because I asked for it and I really wanted it, like, there's something there. And magic, as I define it, as Arthur C. Clarke defined it, is just science we don't fully understand yet. Well, the super, super concise explanation for magic is our brains are quantum computers. Physical reality is a hologram. You are awareness. You are a soul. You have awareness of your individual nature on this third to fifth dimensional plane. And at the ninth level and above, or in Bentino's scale, seventh level and above, there is unity. And at unity, all things exist simultaneously. When magic happens, you cease to be, and it's unity which is. So the times when I very, very deeply got in a state of trance, and the rain stopped and pulled away within a thousand feet of me, or when I, the, I, I did the opposite, and it was in the California drought, and then later in the day it, it drizzled, and I made it rain. It wasn't me that made it rain. It was in a special, powerful moment where I was with unity. And that which was the body of God and me shifted along with the weather. So that was really, really cool and really, really fun. But it wasn't a big deal because I just realized and used my own divine nature. So if we have everybody doing that, people levitating elephants, people waving their hands in the air and like, in the air and like that wonderful book, The Magician King, trailing trails of rainbow light, whatever it is, let's make magic fun. Let's play with it. Yeah, let's all become great healers and heal cancer and heal open wounds, heal degenerative diseases, realize ourselves as the immortal race we are, stay in these bodies as long as we want, whether that's 200 or 2,000 years or longer. And let's keep magic safe. One thing I can promise to any of you who are serious students of the arts, and if you follow me, I will give you a lot of deep stuff and help you become that, is binding spells for safety. And I'll talk about those in another video. But yes, binding spells work. And yes, as you shift more to the love vibration, the vibration of fear, lack, control, Satan, entropy, whatever you want to call it, gets weaker and weaker and farther and farther. The timeline split is coming, my friends. 
there are dozens of prophecies. Any credible source you look at will say, it is happening now, it is happening soon. And the split means many of us will continue to ascend in love and light in a golden age, and many of us will not. And that left branch has all the catastrophes and all the negative apocalypses, while the apocalypses of Revelation, which is one translation of the word, will elevate higher with more love, more light, more fun. And these timelines, which are kind of joined but splitting now, will cease to be as aware of each other. And the, the ones of light will be aware of the ones of darkness and void, um, but will feel it less. And we essentially won't even be on the same planet. We won't feel all the technologically created hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. We won't feel all the Gaia telling people on Earth to wake up um, with contribution to climate change. We will feel something different. We will feel something beautiful. If you believe a golden age is possible, if you know it in your heart, if you've always wanted it, whether it's a magic kingdom, whether it's a 10 million person city of Atlantis I'm going to be building and founding September 1st of 2041, whatever the golden age means to you, ubiquitous, healthy, happy, fun, playful magic, you have access to it. You knew deep down in your heart that something in your life would be, and then it was. It might have been a partner, it might have been a job, it might have been a vehicle, it might have been a place to live, it might have been this video, it might have been one, if not multiple miracles you've had in your life, and you know deep down, deep, deep down, your truth. My friend, if your truth is a fear of the cataclysmic, catastrophic timeline, and you really feel that that's where you're headed, trust me, it will go away. The law of attraction is legit. What you focus on, you do draw into your experience and your awareness. Consume as much positive stuff as you can. Get rid of as much negative stuff as you can in music, in people, in television, in movies, in reading, in surroundings, in pollution, in diet. Purify your life. Purify your body. Purify your mind. Purify your emotions. Purify your soul. And this stuff will just happen automatically. It can take as much or as little work as you deep down are convinced needs to take. And because this is coming so, so soon, I have a major goal of helping people ascend as quickly as possible. Um, and I do truly, sincerely believe that this will help save hundreds of millions of lives. Not just through my work alone, but through the work of every person who wants to contribute to this discussion. So again, thank you very much for any way you can contribute, subscription, like, purchase of a course, support on Patreon, constructive comment, reaching out to me if you'd like a speech, a workshop to work with me privately. Um, I have a limited number of students for that, but I would love to know who you are. I would love to be of service and be here for you. That is more important than money or any other type of energy exchange, which while always nice, this is about something much greater than that one type of energy. So thank you. I love you. I believe in you. I am so, so grateful for your attention. And I hope you have a fun and enchanting and marvelous day.